Hello everybody. In this video, we're going to start looking at the input output elements of C sharp. So we will, should be able to read directories, create directories, create files, write in files, write, read files, things like that. It's actually really cool. So with anything else to add, let's just get started. As you can see, I have a empty uh, console application. I have, I'm inside my program CSS. CS file and in my file IO directory. I call this project file demo. So the first thing that we need to do, of course, we need to use system. We're going to do some console write lines, so we're going to be using it. And also we're going to be using system.io. System up there it will be the namespace that we allow us to get all the files and directories functionality that we will need during this project. So first of all, we need to start getting working with with directories. Let's let me show you a way how to read your file system to to Visual Studio Code. And this could be a little bit different depending on your Linux, Mac, or Windows computer. So normally, if you are a Windows computer, you will do something like string root path, for example, will be something like I'm going to put the add, and it should be something like C, uh, tab, I don't know, something like that, for example. Right. If you are, oh, let's call this root path. If you are in a Linux path, or Mac pad, but pretty much the same. Should your directory should be a little bit different? Should be something like or something like this: home something like that, right? So, depending the case where you are, is how you those path is going to be specified. And it to be important just to remember which operating system you're actually running. Now, one way to bypass that, and the way that we actually using the ad is allow us to have the the backslash without escaping it or, or have like a double backslash in the string. That way we actually using the ad. Other than that, this is pretty much the domain tool that we need to use depending where we are. But the best way to actually need to be using it, and I will actually recommend just to be sure that we have the correct way, is just to get the current directory. One of the cool things is you can actually go to directory, and it will give you all the different elements that we can actually do. You do. We can actually do the current get current directory, and we can do a simple console right line my root let me comment this two out in order to have that warning right that that run and you will see that my full path is there where this project is being executed so with this i will know exactly what i need to do and as you can see i actually have a mistake here this is, a, is with the backslash like this. The forward slash. So if you're on Windows, it's a backslash. If you are in a Linux or Mac, it will forward slash. That's something that needs to be really important. But just to be sure, the, the way that I, you did it, you can actually just get the current directory just to see how your compiler see the, the directory. And you will say, okay, now I know where to go or what to do about it. Perfect. So let's call this one the root path, actually. And we should be able to get the same result. There you go. So, so with the directory element, we should be able to actually see and see the directory. Now, in this directory, we have different subdirectories. Let me actually show you how to get the directory that are here inside. One way to do it will be a simple to directory dot 
and get directory in plural. And if we ask us to send where is the path, my path will be root path. If I execute that, we will have uh, an array by default. So we should be able to print it like this. That means we do something like string. There's equal that. Let me remove the extra parentheses and we do a console. Right line. There's. Actually, not like this. Um, we should be doing something like for each. A string there in directories and we should be using this one over here perfect it will execute again now we see the object directory the bin directory and the vs code directory right those are the ones to get listed through the console in this case we went through the for each now to minimize this code and just to remember something that we've been doing in the past weeks, what I will be doing here is I actually be doing converting this string or this array to list. We should be able to do to list. Perfect. So now my there's will be actually a list of string. And we should be importing from collections generic. There you go. This is it should be running. Perfect. But let me just change this a little bit to this dot for each, and I will say for every directory. With this lambda um, expression, we just do a simple console write in my directory, and we import import a link you because of that actually. Um, yeah, something like that. If we try it again. Now we have the same execution with one line of code. Perfect. So with this, we are actually able to get all the directories and show you that. Now, and we can do that for any path that we have here in the computer. But let me show you something. If I open my object directory, I have a debug directory inside, and that one have a reference directory inside. The Bing one have the reference to there and the book.net. So we actually have a bunch of directories and it gives you only the main one, the one that you have actually at the top. So who can actually get around this? Well, get directories have different implementations. You can see we have three different overloads. So this one is the main one. If we do a simple command, we can actually see the the other implementation that will with the string with a search parameter. So that means if I do something like everything that I start with an O, O star, wildcard, if I do it, it should give me only the OBG folder. Right? If I do uh, dot everything, it should give me just the visual pseudocode folder with that one. There you go. So here we can actually specify the parameter we need to look when we actually send the directories. Another implementation that we need to have is if I do a comma here, we can actually see the search parameters with the enumeration options. So for that, we can do a simple search option dot, and we can do just the top directory, that's the default behavior, or all directories. If I select all directories and execute this again, 
I will show you all the main directories and all the child's elements directories so we have them. So with this command we should be able to get or execute Sorry for that. We should be able to execute or to get all the directories that we have in a particular uh, element. Right now we're using the root path for the current directory where the, uh, the application is running. Now, that's one of the ways that we can actually use it. Another way that Microsoft recommends also is use the environment. So, Let's say, uh, let's see if it actually works. So let's do main documents. So let's do environment dot get folder path. And from my folder path, I will go to my environment dot A special folder and I can list something like I don't know um, my documents so we just look at the environment and it's part of the system element we should be able to see get where's the location of my document or the location of my image or my videos or program files things like that right that would work better in a Windows computer I'm not sure it's going to work over here. This, we can actually try it. So let me change the root path to my document. And let me see what is actually showing it. There you go. It's actually working. My document is my root directory in here. So it's showing me all the files that I have there. Let me change this to top directory only and I will show you what I have in my home directory all the folders that I have in my home directory for my Linux environment so this is pretty this actually helps you give you a specific path for a special folder depending what you need so it's another way to get a specific folder and what and as I said before it works a little bit better in a Windows computer so we have the admin tools, common pictures, program, program file x86, right? All of those are actually listed right here. So this should be another way to get those directory. Let me just get back to the root path and I will list my documents commented out. Let me do a comment over here. Uh, actually, it doesn't need it with a name. It should be enabled. Linux or MacPad. There you go. So I will share my code at the end, so you will be able to just go in and see it. I make this a little bit smaller. There you go. And we should be able to go. Okay. So now with the environment, we saw that we can actually get spe uh, special folders uh, with the directory element, we should be able to get like the correct one or a specific route and do a specific searching to show only the top one or showing all the directories that we have in a specific place. Let me put all directories again. Let me execute. And uh, there you go. I'm pointing to my current directory again. So now that we have that, um we can actually list the files for that particular directory the way to do those files will be something like let me show you um let's do another list a string files equal directory dot get files we had that right here And we can do pretty much the same from my root path. Oh, that actually returns as uh, 
an array. So because I like to actually use the list, let's actually transform this to a list. There you go. And we should be able to do something similar like this one right here. And let's change this to file. File. Files, plural. And let's comment just, let's comment out. And let's keep it. So we will print all the directories and now the files that we have right here. So let me comment it out the directory so we can actually see just the files and it gives us the files with the full path in there. Right? We have the files, the phrase and the program. Of course, we can actually do the same way that we do it over here. So we can actually do with a search option and look for a specific type of file and we execute and we'll list all the files that we have in all the subfolders from here. So all directories actually go deep to the subfolders of the path or by the default in the top directory and we should be fine. So this is pretty much the way to, to get a file for a specific folder or to go through the process of getting the directories. It's actually really, really simple. So another element that we can actually use, uh, let me duplicate this, let me do something like this. And we can actually go, but uh, we can see the file did actually give us the full name, or the full path of the file. Well, the next extra that we can actually use is, is go to path dot and we have different combinations over here. One of the things that we can use is get file name, for example, of this particular file. What is going to give you only the file and name that we have at the end, right? We're listing all the files, but we are not listing directory. So something that we can actually use here, and uh, let me let me actually do this over here. Let me paste this over here. Perfect. And let me duplicate this a couple of times. So we can get the file name. We can get the file name with extension or without extension. So right now it gives you with extension by default. We can actually specify it with our station and then we just comment the other two. There you go. Now we see the other file without the extension itself. Perfect. Something extra that we can do too is get the directory name of that particular file. And we should be able to see where the file is located without the file itself. So we can actually do something like um, something like this. And we try to get this. So we can do file and we do pad. Path dot get file name file and let's do it without station. Is located in and we can do something like this, for example. And we can see now. File file demo is located in this particular place. If we remove the without extension, we should be able just to get the file with the extension itself, and it will tell you the files demo DLL is located in this particular folder, and this one is located in this other folder. So we can actually 
start seeing a little more information that we can use through the file editor. Now, that's not the only way to actually to get file information. What we have also is the file info property. And we can actually do it something like file info, for example, and then do f info, just to have it put it a name, equal new, and we're going to send the file where we are. That will allow us to have access to another property. So we can do f info dot, we can see copy, create, create text. We can see the creation time, the directory, the directory name, length, the full name. There's a bunch up there. We can actually get the length. The length is actually pretty because what it's going to give us is the sizing of this particular um, file itself. So let me just put all this together. Let's do console.writeLine. This one, perfect. And we should be able to print your know, sizing in bytes of every one of the files. To have a little bit better, we can actually do something like this. Let me paste this over here. Then we can do file. Is File info link, size in bits or bytes, I actually believe. And we can get rid of this one too. Now, with that, we should be able to see that every file is in this particular size. And we should be able to see that actually we have a little more control. So now you can actually tag. A bigger files, smaller files, depending on the case, you can actually track if files getting bigger, just adding information in there or not. That actually will help you to go through the process also or to do some kind of validation, depending what you need to do. Now something that we can actually we can actually use or do used to verify if something actually exists. Let me, let's create actually a directory. So what I want to do, I will do it manually over here. I will do, let me do it over here. I will do a new directory and let's put this called data and actually put it inside the bin folder. Let me get it just outside. I will drag it just here at this part and I will do the move and my data directory is right here. Perfect. So now I can actually do Something like this, like um, I can look for a directory. They call the dear search on directory, and I want to look in the my root. So here, that start with the data word. Let me see how much. Did it work? Um, let's do a dear search for each. Um, Let's change this to D. Let me remove system. We don't need that because we actually had it like that. And um, it should be good with that. So with that, we can actually look for that particular directory. Oh, yeah, without, I'm inside the for each. So let me get this out. And let me get this out too. Perfect. I will comment this. I don't need it for now. 
And I will say that if I can actually just retrieve my data. Perfect, I can retrieve my data directory. So I will leave it like that for now. So this is a way just to verify a specific folder is there. You can actually go through, loop through that. Or you can actually do use um, the directory exist functionality. And this will ask you know, if something exists there. So let's do. Mm, let me get rid of this. Let me put a string data path equal this. So we can actually do if this actually exists, do something about it. So the traditional method will be something like pull um, ex data directory exist equal that and a simple if statement that will say if data directory exists you're going to do console Right then, that are already there, or else we can do something like that a directory not there. So let's check it this one. If I do my data path, data ready there. Perfect. Let me get rid of this. I will delete it. And now I can actually execute and see that my data directory is not there. Now to this not there, we can actually do something like this. Uh, Let's do creating directory. Okay, it looks like I don't know how to type. And we can do a simple directory dot create directory. And we can actually just create the data path. So with that validation, it will execute it. Data directory is not there, create a directory. Now it's listed here. If I run it again, my data is already there. So that's a simple validation, something that pretty much we did on the past. One of the cool thing is that you, we can actually do several directories with this, which we're able to do something let me remove my data directory again, right? And let me create here my data path. And let me actually just put a forward slash here because it's a directory. And I will create with, with a subdirectory. If we execute that now, it's not there, creating directory. But if I open my data, I have my subdirectory right there, as you can see it. So the create directory is not only creating the top level, it will give it like a different array. Or let me actually just to show you what I'm actually doing, something like this. It's actually creating those subdirectories too. And it's pretty pretty. But something extra that it does is we can actually get rid of all this validation. We actually don't need it. 
and without that validation, we will execute. Nothing happened. It's not error out because it's already there. But if I remove it, as you can see, just get removed, and I execute it again, this one will create that directory for me with the subdirectory. And if I try to run it again, it will not fail because the create directory already doing that validation for me. So why I did the validation before? Just to show the way that we usually do it. But now this validation is not needed because create directory actually helps us to have the validation right there where we have it. Pretty neat, right? Something similar that we did with the directory and we can actually do with a particular file and we can get back to this one where we actually send the file. We should be able to use the file element and we can actually copy a specific file and do something about it. So let me just create inside my data. I will create a um, new file. Let's call it test dash file dot txt right and let's put a simple hello there so something that we should be able to do with here as we we can actually do file dot copy and we can do the source of the file, the source, and it should be a string. So let's actually do my string interpolation. I have my data path. And the file is called test file.txt. And what I want to do, comma, the destination, and destination we will call copy it file. If I execute this, my test file is now duplicated. You see the copied file, you just get it there, and it have the same content. So we can actually do the copy, we can actually do the move. You can do any type of element that you need. If we execute this again, we have an error because the validation for the copy is not there the same way that the create directory it is. So we need to be careful how we can actually use it and how we can actually enable it. But something extra that we can use we have another implementation called overwrite, and we can actually put this to true. So let me change the content. Let's put this content, modify it. All right, so my copied file have a different content now. But let me just copy it over and let me put it the Boolean this as true. That means that we're going to get overwrite. And now my content is the same as my test file, as you can see here. Okay. And we have other properties. You can actually look through those to see which one actually help you or is better for you. Yeah. Let's do something a little simple. Um, I don't like to use array that much, but let me actually use something here. So let me use a simple array of lines. We have three different elements there. And let's create um, the stream grider element. A stream grider is a way just to to get um, and to write information to a specific file. So let, let, let me show you how, what I'm actually talking about. What I want to do now is pretty much copy all these lines in a new file. So let's get the file like this. So we can actually use 
and the, the greatest stream is something but let's instead of doing the stream let's go to the file element then we can actually do create all lines write all lines for example and it's asking us where we want it so we can actually do path.combine is a safer way and I want to use my data path and my file I want to be created in C sharp dot txt and I want to send my lines in there so we can actually do the path combination this way or we can use the path combine send it the path and the name and it will do something similar and probably we should, this is a little more safer approach so let me execute this okay so you see that in my data path i can now create it in c sharp and it's a file with three different lines those lines are getting there let's say that i want to send an extra one mm, the right all lines is actually what it's doing is just put it all those lines right there let me create a um, file dot append all lines and we can actually do something really similar and let me send here another array and let's see this array be something like another line comma and another we should be able to do something like this oh, let me check if I can do this yeah we can do it like that or we can actually save it a new variable so if i execute this and i go to my creating in c -sharp, i said that my three lines are getting there and these two are getting appended later so let me just to show you that let me put a read line here console dot read key probably should be enough All right And let me put a separation here. So great I like we overwrite the file by default and something that we need to get a contable of. So let me execute. And it's a stop it. So it's already execute this one. If you go to see the files, we just see the first three lines. If I click enter just to execute the console read key, it will append to this particular file the other two lines this way so we should be able to append lines and to see lines like that um, to a specific uh, file now that's not the only things that we can actually do we should be able to read a particular file too so let me get another one here let me do a simple bar um, the file equal and let me save all this over here perfect and I will use something like this better cool. and I don't like this implementation let me just put it one let's do another string equal extra lines this should be more than enough and we do the extra lines in there okay just separate in a little bit of everything so now we should be able to read the files too so let's try actually now to read 
the content of my file we call it the file and the way to read it um, is just really straightforward which we will just to get the the read element of a particular reader or a particular file let me actually show you that okay now that we create the file let's actually read it so the way to read is to create a, a stream reader that we actually see the, the file information so we can actually use something like a stream reader SR, let's call it and it will be my file dot open text and we need to see open text of which particular file we have the the file like this then with stream reader we can actually do something like not like this Let's use a simple while and we can do mm, the way that they actually book say it is something like this. We create the string line by default is null, right? And then we just create we assign it or line equal my string reader dot read line and with that we should be doing console dot write line and line and we should be fine and we can use is not null right so what we're doing is we, we are signing from the stream reader so we, we need to open like the final memory and we're going to be looking line by line remember that the character will be moving according to where you're actually looking at that file and we should be able just to get done with every line with a simple while the way to do this something that we need to do at the end is really important we need to close our stream reader in order not to keep it in memory so you execute this we should be able to see all the lines that we get it from we create it here we can actually do another one called manually insert it and i'm not sure if i type manually correctly but i will leave it like that and if i execute this again we should be able to see manually inserted through here. So with a simple string line, we should be able to read all those um, this particular way. So that's a way to actually read it. Um, so remember, whenever we actually open the stream reader, we need to be closed at the end. Something that we can use in order to get around this could be something like this. Let me just comment all this out. And let me just replicate this right here. I don't know where this belongs anymore, but well, it's just a stay there. So we can actually use using, and that will very much encapsulate what we need to have, what we need to implement. So using, we can actually put the stream reader there. We specify the line. And we do the simple while over here, and it should be pretty much the same. With the only difference that because we're actually using it, that means when we get it outside the scope, automatically everything is is already encapsulated. So when we get out, it just closes by default. So 
these interpretations or this interpretation, depending what is your course of action, both of them should be fine. Now, another way to use it, for me, actually, I like this and a little bit. I don't like to encapsulate that much. So let me keep this for now. And let me send this at the bottom. Right. So I have my SR open and I will have my SR closed again. And we can use something like SR dot read to end. So this is what we're going to be doing is read all the document directly. So we can actually do bar document equal that one. And by default is it's a simple string. And we can actually do console dot right line or document. And we should be able to get everything through there. Now, everything gets saved as a string directly. So, the landscapes that we have at the end, you'll get saved that, like that. So, we can actually do something like with the end dot split. And the character separator should be new line, I believe. Now my string is actually an array. So if we try to do it, we should see it like there is an array. So let me make this to a list because I like the list. Convert it to a list. Um, Let's do a list of a string from my document. And we can do a simple document dot for each line. We're going to control write that particular line. Should be able to close it. Uh, let me call it there. There you go. Now we have the same output, but the difference that we just split it to have it in the array, and that will allow us to get our know, document console right line. Now let's do document arrow two, for example, which we want to print the line again. There you go. So I hope let's close the video here. We have like 48 minutes recording um, and let's recapitulate a little bit. So we show you how to get the current directory. Remember that the path change depending on your Windows or Mac computer or even a Linux computer. So I have those examples, but the best, best way to correct the, the course of action will be to get the current directory that we allow it to to see what the output that your compiler is taking, and then you can mimic that. You can actually get uh, specific uh, special folders using the environment element. We can convert everything to a list that you already know, and we get directories, we see the directories. Remember that we have the search path and, and enable all directories in order to get the subfolders if you need those. We can actually see file with the get files property in the directory element. A simple for each, we allow us to do several elements. We have the file info that, that we actually allow us to access a specific file information, like when it was created, when it was modified, the link, things like that. We are able actually to do Actually, we don't need to do the directory exist. We don't do the validation because create directory do that for us right away. We can copy path this method or we can actually use the path combined. Both of them are pretty much the same and it works pretty much the same, depending on the case. You can actually copy, move files using the files elements. We can actually create an array and save the content of the array with the right lines. 
to a particular file or you can actually open the files and write and look, do write line one by one um something like we're able to to read line one and line one with this particular method so when we actually for open the text it's a stream reader and to read a stream reader we just need to be careful to close it if we need to close it or using the using keyword in order to encapsulate the closing right away and we can actually we'll use the read to end we we'll split it so to get every line or without the split to get all the content in a particular uh, variable and we should be able to get the information for that particular document the way we need it and it's just endless ways to use it um probably what i want to do in the next video is going to be a short one i will show you a nugget package called epp and that will allow us to EP plus ability, something like that, I remember pretty well. It will allow us how to create Excel files in C sharp in a faster, better way. And, and, and we will see that. But for now, I believe this is pretty much everything that we need. You can read the, the, the chapter, you can go to see which other elements we have there. But at the end, playing around with the code is the way to learn. So I hope they give you the correct introduction for now. Um, and I hope that you like this video. Any question, any doubt, don't hesitate to reach me. Happy coding, everybody.